Hello everyone, and <laughs> I can't take myself seriously with this. Mm. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today, I have a microphone. I get why people like these things. <laughs> Just feel more preachy, I guess, when I have this. Feels like I'm important. Like I feel like you wanna hear what I have to tell you right now. Okay, I think I'm ready to start. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm coming to you from my living room floor once again and I want to talk about why full-time content creation is not for me. And this is kind of loosely related to why entrepreneurship in general and like side hustles and starting my own business is not really for me in the way that I see this kind of presented to people very often. You know, I've seen a lot of videos of people talking about how they quit their jobs or they you know, started their own business and then they quit their jobs and how they took their side hustle and turned it into their like full-time job. One of my favorite videos about this is called The Trend of Entrepreneurship and it was made by the channel called The Upgrade. And when I saw this video, I was this video really resonated with me in the way she was talking about it. But I wanna talk about this because as someone who has started to create content as a hobby, I guess, I feel like videos that I often see about this are very catered and curated to people with the intention of basically taking this and turning it into a full-time gig. And while I completely understand that kind of path, and I definitely get that for a lot of people that is what they actually really wanna be doing. For me personally, I feel like a lot of those videos just don't really resonate with me that much because becoming a full-time content creator or becoming like a full-time YouTuber or whatever is just not something that I think I want. I can say pretty confidently that it's not something I want right now. And to be quite honest, again, even though I don't like making absolute statements, I don't think I'm ever gonna want to be a full-time content creator and there's a variety of reasons for that. Just I want to clarify that you know I'm not claiming to to already have reached this quote-unquote influencer status because I don't see myself as that and I'm not sitting here claiming that I have the that I'm even successful at this right so I just want to you know make a note of that and the other thing too is that this, this video in general is not to like put down full-time content creators because I think if anything, starting to do YouTube and then also just creating content on my Instagram has shown me how much work and how hard it is to be a full-time content creator and how just kind of like mentally and psychologically stressful and draining that job is. This video is just purely kind of my perspective on this and my kind of insight on this. This is not a video to claim that I have this all figured out or that I, you know, everyone should do what I'm doing. So, you know, for the purpose of this video, even though I don't necessarily identify as an influencer or content creator, I'm just going to talk about it as content creation because I don't really have a good alternative term. So what I enjoy about social media, about content creation, is that community aspect of it. I also like the kind of creative process that I go through and the artistic side of creating, whether that's slides or taking photos or writing. I just feel like it allows me to tap into skill set and a side of me that I don't get to use as often as I would like to. The other aspects of it too is that it actually does help me process a lot of things. I find that in the process of creating, you know, writing about something or taking pictures or, you know, creating slides and visuals and things like that, I am able to process my own feelings around something, my own experiences around something. And also it's just kind of fun. Now I will talk about what I don't like about content creation and social media. The first being that it feels very performative a lot of the times, right? And inevitably so. And this also applies to me. A lot of the times it feels like I am basically doing things like, you know, doing it for the gram and trying to present this version of life that just isn't accurate, that isn't real and just doing it because I want validation from likes or comments or something else that, you know, my life is good, I guess, or that I'm, I'm having fun or that I'm important. And so a lot of times, you know, the, the pictures that you see are very curated, honestly. And even even videos and photos of people being like authentic or 
you know, try, like being real, oftentimes that too has started to become very performative and very curated. It's like authenticity is something that sells basically, because I think a lot of people are in search of it. <laughs> and so it sells really well. And so that means it's also become commodified too. And so now people are basically, it feels like oftentimes manufacturing authenticity and doing that just, everybody's performing their lives instead of like actually living them. One of the biggest things I dislike about social media, the other is just the constant demand that it has on our time and our energy and our attention. The way that the, you know, the apps are set up, the algorithms are set up to be addictive. Like it's designed to be addictive. And I just feel like usually the more time I spend on it, I like don't feel good about myself because again, you're seeing photos of people's like highlight reels or just the things that they're kind of choosing to share with people. And usually inevitably you end up comparing yourself or like I end up comparing, comparing myself to other people and it can very quickly start to feel very negative for me at least. Also like, you know, it's not always like this, but these are just some aspects that when they're bad, it's bad. It kind of leads me into the reason why I don't want to do social media full time. I think that there's more and more creators now who have gone full-time or who have gone full-time and then returned to being part-time who have kind of talked about how full-time content creation is re basically really bad for your mental health. <laughs> I just know that when you are putting yourself out there and when, are you, when you are creating things, it is very easy. And I've seen this even in my own kind of recreational relationship with social media content creation, it is very easy to overthink everything to get very wrapped up in the kind of the affirmation or lack of affirmation some of your content or your posts receive because a lot of youtubers too you know have talked about you know the instability of being a full-time content creator because you are literally kind of dependent on those views and those likes and people watching your videos and engaging with what you're talking about because if you don't have people watching your videos you know, you're not getting paid as much money. And so when those two things are related, like not only are you kind of feel personally, like your work, your craft is being put out there for everyone to just see, for people to critique, like not just your work, but also your life, your decisions, who you are, you know, it's that combined with the fact that your livelihood is dependent on people liking what you're putting out is super stressful. And I, can understand why then a lot of people will, I can understand even if I don't condone it, but like, like why a lot of people will do controversial things and write clickbaity titles so that people will click on them and so that people will watch their videos because that's where they get their money from. So again, I can understand that I don't condone it, which is why I don't see myself doing this full time because I worry that as someone who already tends to overthink a lot of things that Putting myself into that if full time would just be absolutely terrible. Like I would not ever be able to get out of my own head. So that's kind of like one of the biggest things. The other aspect to this, which I briefly touched on already, but is just the financial instability of it. This is where the video about the trend of entrepreneurship really resonated with me, which is just that, you know, I think nine to five jobs have started to ha get a very bad rep. And I think that more people are realizing that entrepreneurship is kind of not as glamorous as a lot of people make it out to seem. There is this very dichotomous view of what people need to be doing with their lives. It's like either you work a nine to five job or you are this boss babe creator, you know? And so I think that for me, I started to fall into that trap. Like I used to be like my negative feelings towards work would actually go away if I was just an entrepreneur, like if I just had my own business. But in reality, that's probably not true. And in fact, starting your own business is very challenging. You're working all the time and a lot of businesses fail. And when you sink everything into something like that, it's really risky and it's really unstable. And so I think that for me as someone who is, I guess you could say unapologetically boring to some extent, I'm okay with stability. Like <laughs> I think that, I'm okay working a nine to five job if it means that I have a consistent paycheck. Like, yes, obviously nine to five jobs have their own cons, 
But if it means that I have a reliable paycheck, also unfortunately the way that the you know, US system is set up, most healthcare is tied to jobs. It shouldn't be a thing, but it is. I need like those benefits. I need, you know, to I need the retirement. I need the other aspects of stability that just come with a nine to five job. Also, as I talked about in my last chattier video, I always want to do the thing that I'm not doing. And so right now, social media content creation or whatever feels more fun because it's not my full-time job. And I actually feel like I get more joy from it and it's more fun for me because it's not tied to my work. And you know, this is not to say that I'm opposed to monetizing. I don't really want my relationship with this to start to feel less fun. Like I just want it to be fun right now. If you were to ask me like what, what I want to do, I, <laughs> outside of want, not wanting to do anything, my second answer would be that I really could see myself, you know, teaching maybe one course a year as a, as a professor and then continuing to do research and continuing to kind of engage in more like system change. And that is why I am in a PhD program. That's why I continue to want to find nine to five work and haven't tried to make this social media thing a full-time job. I very much want to do those things. And, and with that, I also really enjoy social media and creating content. And so I think that I'm making this video to encourage you if you're someone who is wanting to, you know, start a YouTube channel or start to create content or to do any of those things. However, to whatever degree of seriousness or commitment, I just encourage you to do it if you want to, because, you know, I think the, again, a lot of people think that they have to immediately make it a full-time job or that that has to be the approach that they take when they start doing something. And it doesn't have to be because I don't want to be a full-time content creator, but here I am making, trying to make YouTube videos every week. <laughs> so maybe I am the clown. Maybe I am the, the kind of the fool here in this discussion. Conclusion, full-time content creation is probably not for me at least in the very foreseeable future. It's probably not for me, but I'm still having a lot of fun doing it regardless. Okay, there's no graceful ending to this, so I'm just going to...